right, here we are. Clink. Chin chin. Chin chin. Speaking of that, do you, have you even been joining the enjoying the Love Is Blind Brazil? Is that where the chin chin comes from? Yeah. Brazil. Chin chin is the Brazilian toast or bingy. Brazil. 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 <laughs> Brazil. 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 You had it right. Brazil. 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 <laughs> All right, John Terra Podcast. Here we are. We're out in the park. Yeah, beautiful, yeah. beautiful morning. Sunny out. Sun it's feels warm. nice on my back. It's warm. Yeah. I started feeling mellow right away, so I'm going to have to really think about talking. Oh, yeah, well, drink some more of your mocha. <laughs> yeah, is that why you got me a large? That'll get you going. <laughs> no kidding. Have some more mocha, That's Tara. Small does. John Tara Podcast, subscribe, share with your friends, leave a review, make a comment if you have uh, on YouTube. We're on YouTube, that's probably where you're finding us. Yeah. We have some on Apple Podcasts also, quite a few. Um, I stopped using the service I was using. So I'll set something up again. We'll have our most up-to-date ones there soon. But So, John, how have you been liking Love is Blind Brazil? Love is Blind Brazil. I have yeah. to read because they have, you know, Subtitles. you speak Portuguese, so I can... I can listen to you laugh, but I have to read the screen. Yeah, I think the, the, the translations are actually really interesting. Uh, I they? think they're accurate, but they but they're yeah. more trans they're more um, interpretations than translations mm. um, because they'll use. Yeah, some, some of it doesn't make sense every now and then, based yeah. on the context of the conversation. I find words that aren't fitting. Yeah, but I don't really care because it's just people going. Are we going to have sex tonight? <laughs> now? Uh, How about now? They're How like, now? now? Now, that means no in mm -hmm. Portuguese. But they say, they say, well, we're Brazilian. Of course we're having sex tonight. Oh my gosh. It was just like, <laughs> one girl's like, I promised my friend that I wouldn't on the first night. And, and then she did. She's like, I'm going to have to explain to her, but. <laughs> yeah, I'll apologize to her. <laughs> That's yeah. pretty funny. It's kind yes. of a fun show. Yeah. You know, it's 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 the same old, same old. It's people with problems in relationships that they couldn't work out, so they're divorced now, and they call it second chance. Yeah, all of them were in a previous relationship. A number of them had kids, like even marriages, not just yeah. like, or a long-term relationship. Yeah, or the one lady didn't get married, and she's like, I've never been officially married. I haven't had a ring yeah. So that was easy for no, that she's, guy. They had rings, but she just like they acted like they were married. Yeah. They never did the civil or the religious ceremony. So it was easy yeah. for that guy to go, "Will you marry me?" And she's like, "Yes." <laughs> they seemed a pretty good match. Yeah. 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 Sometimes you can really see, and then you just hope that something else, the next stage, doesn't mess it up. Yeah. So. Well, good thing you met me. You got your second chance. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, I didn't really need second chance kind of stuff. That no. would be tough. I mean, there's there's so much baggage just like automatically. You know what? There is obviously. I had been married before, but I didn't bring ba I didn't bring a lot of baggage. I'd worked out my understanding that you know there was some embedded stuff we could talk about maybe later, but it was. Um, I didn't bring a lot of baggage. I, mean, I think the one I, thing that we, it took us, me at least, a while to discover this was trust. And it was so like middle layer. It wasn't superficial, like you weren't like always checking up on me kind of thing or wanting to check my phone because I didn't get one for a few years anyways. Hmm. But <laughs> that's how old we are. <laughs> but I wasn't giving you a phone right away. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like deeper. <laughs> And but I think that's super common for those who've been cheated on and had bad relationships. And but it was like I remember it took me a while to figure it out because it was like, why does this kind of thing keep coming up? You know, and it was just deep. What was the thing? What was the thing that kept coming up? Yeah, I don't I can't even name a specific thing because it was like 
it was having to identify a pattern across several oh. things. If I can think of, you know, what it is, I'll... It was probably, I think you were generally reticent about certain things. And um, it felt, whether it was true or not, it felt like you were reticent about normal stuff. Like, um, I thought, you know, so we, we've we talked a lot over the years about when and whether to buy a house, for example. And there's so many things that go into that. You know, your current financial situation, you know, us being in business is, is very different. Um, you know, so many things. But I, I saw, I thought that your reticence about what I would consider like normal things taught, there was something more to like your delay or what felt like a delay or reticence. Like I didn't want to own a home, but I have owned two homes. Yeah. We owned a home together. And then the housing bubble burst and we kept our business rather than our home. Right. So that, that's smart business. And if you listen to billionaires, they say don't own anything. So that's why I say it was like really hard to identify um, because it, it was years later. I mean, it, it was only uh, several years ago that you, you even recognized and it wasn't me pointing it out necessarily. It was you like, yeah, there is like an underlying kind of trust thing. Um, Maybe you'd be able to identify Yeah, better. I didn't really want to talk about that right now, but since oh. you brought it up. Um, we don't have to. We can say that for a subscription <laughs> podcast. No, I, th I think it's fair. Uh, it's Well, it relates to the love is blind and, you know, people uh, from Brazil. In, well, who have second chances, you know. I mean, it seems that's probably the majority of people. A lot of people, whether they're married or not, are coming out of you know, long-term relationships or significant relationships. Yeah, but I never looked to anybody for anything. You know, I, I, after each time I was out of a relationship, I just, you know, if I, if I met somebody that was interesting or I, or I was interested in, or they were interested in me, you know, then I just potentially explored or, you know, talked to them or if we dated, you know, or, you know, I got married. There's something of, under the wood chips there. It was just going. It was just moving. Yeah. See it? Um, what is it? Is it a mole? Oh my gosh. Could be a mole. Should we show everybody? <laughs> the wood chips are moving right there. It's pretty interesting. What do you think is going to come out of there? I think it's probably a mole. You're mole, mole, mole. <laughs> mole, mole. Mole, mole. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. That's actually from a movie, but I don't remember. Oh, it's the it's the well, I don't remember what movie it is, but someone has a mole and like, they can't. Austin Powers. Okay, right. I just quoted Austin Powers. Mole, 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 mole. <laughs> so maybe a better question would be, like, how did you overcome, like. I mean, pretty dramatic stuff from. Oh, it's the power of manhood. I don't know. I've I'm heard some. Man. I've heard some men's podcasts, and they're they're pretty torn up, and they're <laughs> they're hurting. What if it is that, What if an alien came out of there? Well, then attack, this will be a attack whole of new, the Martian. We are going to get bugs. the best YouTube video. <laughs> it's going to go totally viral. Yeah. Uh, how did I overcome? So. I think there was a general mistrust of, of women in general, um, and especially in a relationship where somebody, you know, where you have inherent trust, right? There's so many things that you're trusting your, your, the person you're in a relationship with. You're trusting them with so many different things, right? You know, just saying, hey, can you pick up this at the, you know, at the pharmacy? Can you grab groceries? Can you... Make sure you fill up my car when you be on your way home or something. You know, you're you're trusting them with so many different things that, um, yeah, it's really difficult. Well, I, and through all of it, you had a kid with during each of those relationships. Yeah, and in, inherently, you have to trust people if you've got kids. You know, you can't. You're not there 100% of the time. You're so yeah. It's it's just the trust thing. 
I think. Um, but I thought I trusted, you know, but I realized there was a few things that I was, I would question internally, you know, not externally, not, not, you're saying you felt something, but that was when we would have discussions about buying a house or, you know, I, I still don't want to buy a house technically. Um, you know, there have been people who have made money off of houses, but in general, they're a lot of work. There's a lot to do. There's a lot of legal things. There's a lot of different types of taxes. And, and if you own a business, your house is not a very good write-off. Well, this this topic actually gets rather into some intimate stuff, so maybe we save it for a subscription podcast. But I think you must have some very good insights on how to overcome really you know being cheated on and and so forth and I mean relatively you came other than a son you came to the relationship with little baggage you in my mind had converted what would have been the pain and so forth into learning and brought that instead into our relationship rather than the wounds and reacting to the wounds well I could say this I never you know as soon as somebody cheated on me I didn't have any regard or for them anymore I didn't have any you didn't hang around no 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 why would I want somebody that cheats you know I and I didn't I didn't think <laughs> maybe it's my ego but I didn't think it was a reflection on me you know maybe it was just being naive um, but I never took it like I was upset at in the moment but it but it didn't last long and it wasn't I didn't take it personally mm-hmm. I think a lot of people you know, look at themselves and go, what was, what was it? What did I do? What didn't I do? You know, that kind of thing. And I'm like, well, if somebody's not going to ask, or if they're not going to, uh, you know, have conversations about things they want and need, then that's on them. You know, and it's, it's very, it sounds really simple and practical, but that's the way I am. You know, I'm not, I'm not like, I got to try and fix somebody else. You know, I'm, I'm open. I'm like, Hey, you know, whatever you want to talk about, let's talk about it. But I'm not going to try and fix you unless you're working on you. I'm not going to try and change you unless you say, I want to change. Then I will help you find the different things you need to change or find resources, find reasons why or not, you know, the pros and cons, that kind of stuff. And then you know the questions you know just why do you want to change what do you want to change how do you think you can change it what if we keep looking at this spot over here like if something's <laughs> going to emerge well, I'm, I'm looking it's easy for me to look at and i'm I mean, wondering if there's baby turtles in there <gasps> i bet they're there because we're near a lake here oh wouldn't that be so cool because that is a good spot in the sense that it's protected but it gets warm sun yeah that could be it's good morning till noon sun yeah <clears throat> Yeah. That would be super cool. Mm-hmm. So that's interesting. I think you're very right because even in my own experience of having a very different kind of traumatic relationship experience, uh, it is the taking it personally part that makes it really traumatic. Yeah. And. So that's really, it's really interesting. What do you think it is about you that even though, cause like if you're particularly married to someone, I mean, that's as personal as you can get. So how do you not take it personally? Well, or is it once it happens? Well, there are things that, that cause things to end, right? So if you're in business and a company doesn't pay you, you're not doing business with them anymore. Mm-hmm. And or if they they do something completely wrong, they give you wrong information and it causes you to get a you know a fine if you're doing work for the state, you do something wrong, or if an inspector comes in and and says you can't do it that way and you were told by an engineer that you could or something, you're you're not gonna work with that person again. Um, you know, if you're if you're uh, in a relationship, the the number one thing that immediately ends a relationship is cheating you know that in my mind you mm-hmm. know that you know could there be a situation I don't know I watched this thing and this guy 
him and his wife were married for like 80 some years and he found out when he was 90 that his wife cheated like 60 years ago yeah no no like 75 years ago or something <laughs> and he divorced her <laughs> it was like i was like that to me was a little extreme yeah. like like if somebody i'm not trying to justify anything but let's say somebody did something in the first couple of years of marriage and then you've been married for well like us 25 years 24 years right and then that person was like i have to tell you this and you know i think I think you have to at that point you got to weigh it. What do they call that? Like in in law, like there's a certain time period where it, it statute of limitations. Yeah, there's a statute of limitations on well, it, uh, there, certain there, things. Well, there isn't. It's personal, right? You'd have mm -hmm. to decide what you're gonna do, and and but yeah, I I think I think there there would be, you know, like like I said, I'm not trying to justify. It. I'm not gonna tell you about something two years from now, but it's like. I'm just going to keep it to myself. <laughs> Not going to tell you. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I think that, you know, at some level, you'd, a little, a little sparrow, you'd be like, you know, that that's stinks, that really sucks, you know, but we've been together now for 24 years, 23 years since the incident. But really, at that point, why even say something? Oh, you're going to keep it secret, huh? Well, let's hypothetically talk <laughs> about this because, like, it... Well, you know, I, th it, it, I think it, it would help the other person because I think people know. I think people can feel it. I think there's certain things that would you would be holding back more things because of that one thing. I think, yeah. I think complete and utter honesty in a, in a relationship with things like that, right? I don't think you have to tell me if you think, you know, if, if, if my breath smells and we go into a place and you know I'm not going to be near anybody, you don't have to tell me, oh my God, your breath stinks. <laughs> you know, keep it to yourself. You know, <laughs> if I'm not going to be close to anybody. I get the stinky breath all to myself. Not, not that big a deal. Well, you know, if you can't stand it, then yeah, I should certainly say something. But but you know what I'm saying. I mean, if if you're wearing a jean skirt right now, and and I'll just be honest on the thing, that's not my favorite thing on you. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> oh, <laughs> live on camera. <laughs> but you know, I, it's it's it doesn't matter. You know, it's it's not like I don't love you anymore. It's not like I'm not attracted to you. It's not like it turns me off. It's just there are other skirts or things that I like better. You know, I mean, I could keep that to myself. I didn't. I just said it out loud, but but I could keep that to myself. That's you know? out of the bag. Well, I would expect you to tell me if something like really does keep not look good. Keep the kitty in the bag, Tara. That doesn't look good. I mean, oh yeah, if it didn't look good, yeah, it's not just because it's not my favorite doesn't mean it doesn't look good. Mm -hmm. You're my favorite, and you're in it, so. Essentially, I really want to dig that up now. I know. We'll, we'll be here for a while so we can... It, it kind of seems like it, it gets some energy and it, it bubbles up, up a little bit. When the sun was beating down on it hard. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, still waking up. <laughs> little turtles. Well, if they're hatching, they're moving around. And... So there is a, a lady on Love is Blind Brazil who, who was previously obviously very overweight because she had bariatric surgery. And I mean, obviously, I just say this because I've only known the people who do that who are that are very overweight. Our nickname for her is the Big Brazilian. And she's extremely <laughs> sensitive. About, which any, is under, about anything well, I relating mean, to that. So just for perspective, I've weighed over 100 pounds since I was nine years old. And an average nine-year-old weighs, weighs 60 pounds. Yeah. And so I, I know what it's like to be sensitive you know to those topics but i think fortunately also i addressed it as a younger person and so you know ha have had more life to kind of process that and she they were having they're on their honeymoon right so they've been proposed to they they take the couples to a honeymoon location and they get to know each other in a more intimate environment because before they they didn't get to see each other until after they proposed and then they see each other for the first time. Right. And so her fiance, they were, you know, on a, on a romantic swing and, and, you know, just like 
cuddling and having fun and he picks her up and he's like well, you're not that heavy and and she got upset about that and I was like even I was like even though I heard it in Portuguese and I saw it in English I was like but he just said you're not that heavy right. you know like right well I, and then she reinforced it by saying I'm 136 pounds right you know she yeah and so you know it is it is real that people bring stuff from their past and so when someone is like okay I'm working on myself before the next relationship you know it's it's necessary but I think it's also it's interesting should I say something controversial yes please if you need bariatric surgery you actually have a mental health issue yeah I think that yeah. that's it's it's not it's not that you're obese it's that you're mentally ill and you're you're not capable of many many things just because you got skinny doesn't mean you're going to be a good in a relationship so it's interesting you know the concept is love is blind right and can you fall in love with a person for for who they are and i think they do tons of work on the back end you know cuz they bring together maybe 24 guys and or 20 guys and 20 ladies and they have to have done tons of research and gone through so many profiles to, to even end up with any matches. And so I'm sure they're matching up, you know, they have probably, they're t- probably taking bets behind the scenes who's going to match up. Well, they had that gal, and then on the guy side, they had a guy that was still overweight. He was, he was very self-conscious about it. He's like, I hope I meet someone, you know, mm-hmm. that can love me for who I am. Yeah. Yeah. But and what they're I think, probably wondering if those two would match up, right? Well, and I'm thinking too that, you know, there, <coughs> there is such a thing. Like, you, there are a couple quote smoke shows, on on these shows, right? They're, they'll have one or two people, a guy and a gal, that are like the hot person, right? And, but they have other characteristics that might not match, hey. you know. And you know, if they are out in public. Yeah. You know that person might get whoever they want, and so the each, so I think they're also on the back end matching that kind of level, so that when they meet, you know it's not too disparate in in levels. Are they matching them up in the initial meetings, or do they let them randomly choose their own door to go into the rooms to talk with each that other? That I don't know. It would be interesting to see what their process is. Yeah. But I think that they're doing a lot of pre-screening. First of all, I remember hearing on another show that they, you know, they, they do a mental health test and criminal background check and all that kind of stuff, which I think is a responsible thing to do. But I think they have a team of psychologists and relationship experts who are, are you know, they have a... Mm, Mishmash of a bunch of people. Yeah, just... Because yeah. obviously they want the show to be success, and to have a success you need to have people who propose to each other and then eventually get married. Otherwise it would not work out. Well, I wonder how many they go through to get yeah. matches. I mean, if you know, if they brought in those 20 and 20 and they come out with five, that's that was the first batch, right? They came out with five people, mm-hmm. five couples. You know, that's a relatively high percentage, but you're also just dealing with the person's personality. There's no some people describe themselves, they're not technically supposed to. Yeah. You know. But they'll be like, oh, I like working out. You know, the guy's like, oh, yeah, I like working out. Oh, my bicep got in the way the other day when I was <laughs> when I was brushing my hair. <laughs> you know, and, it, and then the woman will be like, mom, my hair is down to my butt, and I'm not. Oh, I know, I'm not supposed to say anything, and it's it's auburn. It's or that one show. She's like, I sometimes I get mistaken for Megan Fox. When people ask. Me oh yeah, that was if, the most. That yeah. you used to see the memes all over the place about that chick. Yeah. Yeah, she got slaughtered online. I bet. I bet. <laughs> you know, there's if your nose and your mouth shape look like a superstar, but your body doesn't, don't say anything. Don't. No matter what people say to you, you know, don't say anything. I don't run around. People say I look like somebody. I don't run around telling everybody that people say I look like <laughs> that. I say that he looks like me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky him. Right. Well, I was born first, so... Well, and you actually have the skills that he portrays in the movies. Well, I, uh, I'm pretty sure he's trained with enough people. I, I'm pretty sure he's he's quite skillful. You can't you can't fake a lot of that stuff on screen. You have to have the coordination and the movements, and you know you have to 
instead of actually hitting the person, you have to just miss them. That takes a lot of skill too, mm -hmm. you know. So I, I don't, I wouldn't put it. I w I'd put it on him that he has some skills, you know. Probably hasn't been in in real fights, but you know, mm -hmm. not like me scrapping on the hard streets of Coon Rapids when I was a kid. Real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, makes a difference. Yeah. So do you think that was the key component for you getting over, you know, betrayal essentially is, is not taking it personally or would you, like once it happens, you kind of just like cut it off? Well, okay, for a guy, yeah. what I hear a lot of women do is when they get jilted, they, you know, they, every guy sucks. I've heard guys say that about women. All women are. I've been hearing that more and more. From guys, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, all women are oars. Yeah, on, you know? <laughs> on podcasts, <laughs> they all belong in rowboats. They're all oars. You know, it's <laughs> it's. I think, it, you know, individuals, people are individuals, and individuals do individual things. They have their own characteristics. They have their own character. They have their own properties. Their own processes, and not everybody is the same. So I, I think that with that in mind, you know, as a guy, as a young guy that had no internet, there was no internet. There was, you know, we had cell phones and uh, I think I got my first cell phone in like. 96 or 98 or something? No, like that. sooner than that. Because. Really? Mm, yeah, I had a cell phone at no, I didn't have a cell phone in 96. There were cell phones in 96, but I didn't yeah. have one. Um, but yeah, I got my internet in 96 or nine, late, early, mid 95 probably. And sorry, I had a bug bite on my head. So I was trying to pick the, I squished it and I was picking the bug out of my hair. <laughs> um, so I didn't have I mean, you could go to the library, you could go to a bookstore, and you could get a book, and you could read on relationships and stuff like that. And I did that. I did self-help stuff like that. But it was very practical. You know, if this happens to you, you know, figure out why it happened and go. And I was a guy. I was a practical guy. I was a mechanical guy. And I was just like, oh, well, that tire popped. Get a new tire. You know, it's like well, that, I think that wheel bearing went out. You replace the wheel bearing. You know, it, it's... What's key about what you're saying that you didn't take it personally is, I'm going to quote famous Jordan Peterson again, is, you know, he just says what distinguishes trauma from, from just a, this is not an exact quote, from just something bad that happened to you is that there's an act of malevolence to trauma. And so I would say that implies that you have taken it personally. like you perceive that that person is deliberately picking you out of the crowd and targeting you with an actual malevolent thought. Well, these and, thing, the things that happened to me happened a relatively short period of time. So I was grateful within a year, right? Within the first year. And so I was actually- But you also didn't prolong it. Like you said, if some- you No, know, I was actually pretty grateful that it did, you know, that I found out sooner than later, um, you know, that that, that would happen with that person that mm -hmm. they would do that you know and and I mean I said things like what are you thinking you know what do you if that's what you need then there you go and then you're free <laughs> you go do whatever you want you know mm -hmm. don't have to hide anything from me just go do what you want mm -hmm. you know I'm not I'm not party to this because I I don't want to be looking over my shoulder or or trying to track somebody you know, you and I, oh, here's, here's the thing we could talk about that's kind of interesting, right? Okay. Ever since we've had phones, you and I, ever since phones were trackable, right? Ever since the smartphone, you and I have had each other's passwords. You and I have, and, and we have our follow each other's things turned on. So we know where each other is at. You know, and to us, it, to me, it's a safety thing. To you, probably is too, but that little chipmunk is a baby. <laughs> the, uh, you know, it's practical. You can pick up my phone. You can put in the password. You can use my phone, do whatever you want. It doesn't matter to me. 
um, my iPad, my computer, everything, you know, and you know, they're, they're work tools. I mean, they're, they're entertainment too, but they're work tools. You know, I, I like listening to YouTube and, and I pay for the subscription so I don't have to have commercials and that's how much I like it. (laughs) But it's information. It's, you know, it's that found time that they talk about where you have, you're driving in the car, you could listen to music or you could listen to a podcast or you could listen to an audio book. Ever since you could plug your, your, CD player into your car with a tape cassette that you'd put in the tape cassette that that transmitted through your CD player. I had that. You know, I have had RF transmitters from in my car when before they had plugs for the phones. You know, for everything. You know, the technology, so I could yeah, so I could utilize the technology. iPods. You know, I've had every iPod ever made. You know, and and. You know, I had them in my car, and and so I could listen to stuff. Have them in my pocket, so at work I could listen to stuff. You know, it's that's what it's there for. The technology's there to serve me. It's not there to get me in trouble. It's not there for me to hide anything from you or anybody else. You know, and so in one of the the parts of the episode of Love Is Blind, this couple who would who had kind of been matching, she was getting it seemed more and more desperate. Uh, it's Renata and Alexandri, and <laughs> and she she uh, first of all one person that she was matching with uh, confused her with someone else, and he and he had to end up saying, um, "Sorry, I I kind of proposed to you, but I meant to propose <laughs> to someone else." And so of course she was really upset. Yeah. Uh, and so then she started going harder for her number two pick and one day she just started she was already obviously pretty superficial like you know i i'm into stuff i want to she's a major gossiper oh she said she thought she was the prettiest woman in the place and she pretty much she said to him in this one date uh you know if i if i'm not happy with how you look that'll be it you know and then he broke up with her yeah he was like we're done she said it like in five different ways yeah and he's like wow you really what did he say he's, he's you blew like, it yeah he said you blew it he's like you're you're totally not humble yeah you know, superficial you and that's not what this is supposed to be about and he was like i'm totally confident in myself you know i'm i'm and it was a very appropriate response yeah. uh, because she was being that way. And then they came back the next day. Well, she even said it off camera. She said, if I don't like him, I'm just going to kiss him on the cheek, hug him and walk away. Yeah. Yeah. And so that is after the reveal. So they propose to each other. Then they get to see each other for the first time. Yeah. And so she's saying, you know, if he doesn't meet my expectations, I'll just. Yeah. A woman or a man like that is never going to be happy. You know, they're, they're not happy with themselves. They have to find. They, they, they're not finding something in their significant other that that they can value. They're just looking well, at surface. And like Alexandre said, you know, you're in the wrong experiment. Yeah. If that's the way you're thinking. So the that's next Alexander, day. That's Alexander in English. Yeah. Alex. <laughs> so the next day they came back and she's ready to apologize. But he starts by apologizing, saying yeah. maybe I might have been a little too harsh. And that was too bad. So she didn't even get around to apologizing. She was like, I've, I'm premenstrual, you know, and she really should have been the one apologizing. And he actually started apologizing. Then she proposed to him. Yeah. And it's just like, whoa, you're reinforcing bad behavior. He accepted. And so it's just all like she got caught up. She got caught up in making sure that she's getting married for the show because she wouldn't want to feel like the kid that didn't get mm-hmm. picked for kickball or something, you know. Yeah. And because that would then that would show people that because she doesn't think she's beautiful, that's why she walks around saying she's the most beautiful person there. She's reinforcing it for herself. And will never be able to submit to the relationship and definitely not him. Well, and the thing she doesn't realize is that he fell for her without even seeing her. Mm-hmm. You know, that once she realizes that, then she could have true, true solace in the fact that the relationship was something meaningful. You know, it was deeper than just her looks. Mm-hmm. You know, that's and, huge. 
Yes. I mean, when I met yeah. you, I wasn't even attracted to you. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I couldn't be because I was I was your martial arts instructor, but I and it was I wasn't looking for the next girl to walk in to date, you know, because I wasn't dating my students, and you know it it. I tried to set you up with other guys. I knew you were, I'm, as I got to know you, I realized you were a high quality woman. And I was like, this woman is going to make somebody a great wife, you know. And I tried to tell the single guys, hey, ask her out, you know, go have a cup of coffee with her, go take her out to lunch or something, you know. And, and you weren't having any of it because you were after me. Well, they, none of them actually asked, and I'm not disappointed, but why don't you think that they. I think asked? they might have talked to you and then. You know, it. It. De I think guys. Guys don't just walk up and say, "Hey, do you want to go to lunch?" Yeah. They gotta establish something first, you know. Mm -hmm. And well, I'm sure there are some guys out there that do that, but you don't want to just be like, "Oh, well, I'm so complimented." Yeah, let's go. <laughs> you know. <laughs> do you think that the guy <coughs> needs to be more attracted to the woman, like deeply in love? with a woman or the woman with the man in order for it to, to be a successful relationship? I have no idea. Well, if you're just to kind of shoot from the hip, what would you say? Uh, okay. The woman has to, let's take traditional roles, right? The woman has to know that she can be provided for. Like, she's not going to go hungry. She's going to have adequate shelter and the guy has to be intrigued enough to want to do that for her and then once the woman needs to show a level of respect to the guy like belief in the guy um, and then the guy will be e eternally intrigued you know it's very very easy in my mind it's very easy for a woman to keep a guy and I'm not talking about some egocentric, narcissistic asshole. I'm talking about a regular guy like me, you know. If you are smiling at me, you're hugging me, you're touching me, you're saying thank you. If I do something, you know, one of these days I'll do something for you and give you an excuse to say thank you. And <laughs> and then and then I, I that type of appreciation goes a long way, right? And then you keep yourself up, you look cute, you wear your cowgirl hat, you got a braided mane, you know, like a <clears throat> pretty, pretty pony, <laughs> you know, and I'm a my little pony. And I can, and I can say stuff like this and you laugh and then you make a, a witty comment like that and, yeah. and everything's good. You know, if you got offended or oh, you call me a horse, what am I just some work animal for, you know, for you to ride? Uh, yeah. Yeah. What well, do you just want to ride me? Well, you can put a saddle on me too. You know, I mean, that kind of attitude. You're like, nope, it'll be a muzzle if you keep that up. <laughs> well, yeah, it'll be a... <laughs> take, uh, Anyways, not gonna say you're going more. to the glue factory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, only certain people get that yeah, reference. I either. love you. <laughs> <laughs> so what I hear and what I've heard and learned is like appreciation is number one to guys. Uh, uh, acknowledgement of of yeah appreciation you know the acknowledgement of of the things that he's doing or has done well, so I to, heard a, to a degree and then that comes along with you know that that respect for the position right like I respect you as my wife I respect you as the woman in our relationship and that you have a a ton of womanly things that are on your plate right and vice versa if you respect me as the man and I have all the manly things on my plate and we determine what those things are, right? Right now society is trying to tell everybody, I'm making a clip by the way. Mm. Right now society is trying to tell everybody what their roles are. The man's role and the woman's role and this and that and this. No, it comes down to the relationship that you have, the person that you're with. You know, if, if you like mowing the lawn and it fits into your and our schedule and you get out there and you're gassing up the tractor and firing it up and mowing the lawn i'm unless you're being unsafe i'm not going to say anything i'm gonna be like oh she likes to mow the lawn you know well good i don't have to do it <laughs> you know 
I'll, I'll do some other stuff. You know? I do it, but you have a very particular way of doing it. No, no, no. I don't have a particular way of mowing the lawn. I have a particular way of being a man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mow the lawn a certain... Well, I, I'm saving... I'm letting some trees grow right now. Yeah, no, you and know, I'm not... Instead of just mowing all the grass down. Right, and I'm, you save the clover for the bees, and you, yeah. you're you very careful about not scaring the chickens, and so... I'm, right, <laughs> I let the dandelions grow for weeks and weeks until they puff out, and, yep. and the lawn is much more healthy because of it, you mm -hmm. know, because the dandelions bring the calcium up, and that kills all the other weeds, mm -hmm. and it kills... It actually kills the dandelions, too. Once there's enough calcium in the topsoil, dandelions don't grow. Mm -hmm. So... There's a, there's a natural order to everything, and and I think if more people understood that or, or or looked into it, you know, read the farmer's almanac, did these kinds of things, you know, then people would know. Mm -hmm. You know, there's herbal books and gardening books and botany books, and you know, learning all this kind of stuff is is you know, it's your responsibility as human being living on the planet to know something about the planet and your local environment would be best, right? Mm -hmm. Your yard, start with your yard. And then maybe go to a city park and learn about some of the trees. You know, we got pines, we got white oaks, we got a ginkgo tree over there. We've got, you know, there's a white pine here with the long needles, you know, so I think that's a spruce with the short needles over there. And, you know, don't correct me if I'm wrong. Stop thinking yeah. about it. <laughs> Sorry. Jeez, like, wifelopedia. She just gets yeah. going. There's a sumac over there. There's also. sumac, yeah. yeah. There's probably turtles under the wood chips here. I think so, yeah, because they're only moving when the sun hits them. Yeah. yeah. They're reptiles. They need the heat from the sun. Yeah. And if it's a nice sunny day, they know that they'll have enough energy to get down to the lake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the sun keeps going behind the clouds. Yeah, well, it's behind the tree now, too. Well, I'm particularly grateful that I didn't have like traumatic experiences and relationships before you because I do think that that really makes it difficult for the next relationship. I mean, you do have to do that work to not just be reacting. Yeah. And it could be in your family relationship and it could be in dating relationships. Yeah. 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 I feel like I lucked out there. Left in. So yeah, talking about roles, you know, I mean there there's some standard things that I think when a couple gets together they should they should figure out. Like when we met, you know, I had an apartment, you were living at your parents, you know, and and you told me you do a lot of the cooking, so I picked up right away that you know how to cook. Um I was living on my own, so either I was eating at restaurants or cooking. I don't know if you noticed either way, but, you know, I was doing both. <laughs> you know, because when we met, you know, I didn't have a lot of money. And I had a lot of money before we met and for a year. And then when we got together, I didn't have a lot of money because I was living off my savings. And, and uh, so my meals were changing in the type of food I was eating and then mostly you know students would take me out to lunch or dinner and that kind of stuff I'd get invited to people's houses and <laughs> so mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah if you figure out those things you know I was doing my own laundry and then I shrunk one of your sweaters and so you were like I'll do the laundry from now on and I was like yes mm -hmm. I was like ooh this is our favorite hot water yeah. Let's dry that sucker. Oh. <laughs> it's a very cute top. Actually, your mom bought me a whole outfit, and that ruined the outfit. Oh, bummer. Yeah, it was a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> you got other cute That's outfits. Cute. Well, now I do. Yeah. But then, then that was pretty special, especially from your mom early in our relationship. Yeah. No, I didn't mean to do it. I forgot it was in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful day. It is. Yeah. So what else is on your mind? Well, like I was mentioning in the car on the way here, I've been learning a lot about scapegoating. And is that the goat that runs in the woods and picks all the garlic scapes? No, it's very different. <laughs> yeah. 
and I think we'll talk about it more on my channels and stuff because that's while I'm very grateful that I didn't have like pre-trauma leading before our relationship uh, it was very your trauma with your family after we got together right and that really stunted me for a number of years and I've been putting together the pieces of the puzzles and I think there's a lot that I can share to help others that you know you just go you go through life you might end up having a similar experience with a boss or or something but um, yeah if you're being scapegoated you're being controlled you're being belittled you're being maligned and you're being controlled so that other people can can do what they want so basically the blame is being put on you and you're being ostracized from whatever group that you are a part of and the assumption is that you're innocent you probably are innocent but in the in the mod modern assumption is that you are innocent that the guilty person is not just scapegoated the guilty person is actually banished that would be different right so if you find yourself uh, having being inappropriately blamed and then uh, primarily by a family member run out of the group yeah you can mm -hmm. you can fight for different things in the workplace but primarily by a family member you'll know who it is it's the borderline person in your family that's doing it to you <laughs> well, it's interesting, so learning about some of the history, you know, it, it exists in mythology and it exists in the story of Jesus, but it takes a very different twist in uh, Jesus' story. And it was in more mytho mythological and pagan times a way to uh, get rid of what was thought to be plaguing the society. So it might be a sickness, it might be anything a drought or whatever is plaguing the society and so it was in the time of sacrificing animals and the the priest or whoever would would curse essentially curse the animal put the all the blame on the animal and then the animal would be typically run off a cliff and that was the scapegoat right you know typically or iconically a goat and and then, you know, the rains would come or whatever, and everybody was happy again. And it was a way of maintaining peace. Uh, peace and harmony, which is a synonym, but, you know, basically non-chaos in the society. So it has grounds, It's kind right? of amazing. It's, it's like a freeing up of energy in the ancient method, right? You, put, mm -hmm. you curse the animal, you put all the blame on the animal, you run it off the cliff, it dies, then everybody's like, oh, all those problems are gone. Here's one thing I didn't tell you in the car on the way here. So also the rites of passage would be a part of this. So like is typical for young men, right? To do a walkabout or, or some kind of rite of passage. A well, you hunt. have to go kill your first animal on your own. Right. And yeah. so it instead of the young men being rivals against each other and competing, they had to go through their own personal journey and be their have their own be their own sacrifice well, and they're way. supplying the tribe with food well i don't know if it's as much that from what i understand oh, it yeah. was more their own personal journey and then there would be some that didn't survive you hang would... on there were some that didn't survive and that would be an example for the society that sometimes there is sacrifice in order to go to the next level right yeah. to become the next version of yourself but the, the point was also to maintain harmony in the society so it was a, a self-selecting kind of pro process, you know, like that one didn't come back, this one came back with a hunt. Mm -hmm. They had their own journeys and stories to tell about rather than competing, the young men in particular, right? Rather than competing and killing yeah. each other. Yeah, well, the ones that didn't come back didn't have any stories to tell. No, but the, the, the tribe had a story, you know, and it was kind of like the tribal sacrifice in a Which, way. Could you imagine being a young man coming back with food for the tribe? That It'd had be like the highest hero. of highs, yeah. yeah. It'd be, it, you'd be honored. Well, that that actually is part of the the scapegoat process. So that's a voluntary scapegoat where you 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 take yourself out of the situation and you come back, and and the scapegoat actually intrinsically is the hero because even the scapegoat, the actual goat that goes off the cliff, and then the rains come, it's like, yay! That that scapegoat was the hero. What we wanted came to fruition. And so it's, it's so interesting how it's like 
ingrained in us. So the high priest was a weatherman. He could see when the rains were coming. He was a shaman. And he's like, we need to sacrifice a goat. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> well, good. All right, let's leave the rest for another talk. And All right. Subscribe. Adios. Ask questions. We'll answer them. Oh, we should have answered. Oh, well. What was it answered? Well, we should have answered. We have a couple of questions, and we should have reviewed your uh, video. We'll do that soon. Okay. Bye-bye. See ya.